Hello, hello, I'm Brenton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to talk about the parts of the cell cycle and mitosis that you need to know for the MCAT. Let's start with the cell cycle in G1. The respiratory system is a vital system in the human body that is responsible for exchanging gases, specifically oxygen and carbon dioxide, between the body and the environment. It plays a crucial role in maintaining homeostasis or balance within the body. The respiratory system consists of several organs and structures, including the nose, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, and lungs. Let's take a look, closer look at each of these components, beginning with the nose. The nose is the external opening of the respiratory system and is responsible for filtering, warming, and humidifying the air we breathe. Air moves through the nostrils in the nose. Next, we have the pharynx, also known as the throat. This is a muscular tube that connects the nose and mouth to the larynx and esophagus. So what's the larynx? The larynx, also known as the voice box, is located at the top of the trachea and contains the vocal cords, which produce sound. The trachea, or windpipe, is a tube that connects the larynx to the bronchi and carries air to and from the lungs. Next, we have the bronchi. There are three on the diagram I drew here, but the MCAT only expects you to know the first just to know that they're all bronchi. The bronchi are two tubes that branch off from the trachea and carry air into the lungs. The bronchi are divided into smaller tubes called bronchioles, which we'll zoom into on the right here. Bronchioles are responsible for distributing air to the alveoli. The alveoli then, as we travel down the diagram with the green arrows till we get to number 13 here, alveoli are tiny air sacs located at the end of the bronchioles. They are surrounded by a network of tiny blood vessels called capillaries. The walls of the alveoli are thin, allowing for easy diffusion of gases. Oxygen can be inhaled into the alveoli and diffuses into the blood, while carbon dioxide moves from the blood and then is exhaled out of the body. The bronchi, bronchioles, and alveoli are responsible for the exchange of gases between the air and the blood. They play a crucial role in the functioning of the respiratory system and are essential for maintaining body homeostasis. Now let's go over a few miscellaneous pieces of information about the respiratory system that is important to know for the MCAT. So the first piece is kind of easy, but can be confusing depending on where you learned about veins and arteries. The pulmonary veins, shown here in red, are saturated with oxygen, while the pulmonary arteries are deficient in oxygen, shown in blue. This makes sense because veins go towards the heart and arteries go away from the heart. So as you can see, I've drawn in here, the heart going to the lungs and the lungs going to the heart. So blood only becomes oxygenated in the lungs for it then to enter the heart. And the deoxygenated blood then needs to be pumped out into the lungs to get oxygenated to then complete this cycle. The other incredibly important part to talk about whenever we're talking about the respiratory system is the bicarb buffer. The MCAT loves asking how you can regulate your blood pH specifically through respiration. So we're going to get into that right now. This is one of the most high yield things I'm going to talk about today. First, let's begin by taking a look at the bicarbonate buffer. So we need to think what happens when a person is breathing heavily or hyperventilating. We say that that person is breathing off CO2 or getting rid of CO2. So if we're hyperventilating, we're going to decrease the amount of CO2. So what will happen to the levels of hydrogen based on Le Chatelier's principle? You're right. Hydrogen will go down just due to the laws of Le Chatelier. So if we have a decrease in hydrogen, hydrogen concentration, we are then going to have an increase in blood pH. Now, please take a moment to think about how the respiratory system will try to counteract a high blood pH. You're right. It'll decrease respiration. So let's fill that in our taper, table here. How about if the pH is low? What will the lungs do to try and fix this? Right, we kind of talked about this one. We're going to increase respiration to blow off CO2. This is why if somebody's hyperventilating, you have them blow, blow into a paper bag. 
This helps prevent too much CO2 from being lost and therefore preventing alkalization of the blood. I hope you found this overview of the respiratory system helpful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.